It was a memorable day in the neighborhood. I was six years old in the first grade on my tricycle. Someone older and wiser rode by on a real bike, age seven. But then she stopped to talk to me. How come you're still on a tricycle, she asked. I said, because I don't have a real bike yet. Her next question though was impressive. She asked, how's it going with subtraction? That's when I knew she was not only older and wiser, she was omniscient, as in possessing universal knowledge about everything, including my thoughts. My true confession followed about how I just didn't get it. She got off her bike, kicked her kickstand, came up to me, held up both hands, and said, Marina, it's easy. If you have to do eight minus three, hold up eight fingers, take away three, and count what's left. Just do it under your desk so the teacher can't see. That day I learned it wasn't subtraction at all. It was takeaway and it was easy. I never saw her again. That person who resolved my existential first grade math problem. And I also didn't get her contact info. Now that was an early learning edition of a lesson that would repeat itself over and over again in my life, each time slightly different, but reminding me that each of us brings special qualities, gifts and skills to others. And nowhere is this more evident than in a Toastmasters club. And we're not even particular, are we? We want everyone to join. The math whiz, the algebra dropout, the practical joker, the sports star, the prom queen, everybody, including the omniscient ones. All have something to give to the club and all have something to learn in Toastmasters. So the two important things to remember are how valuable and unique each person is. And secondly, that Toastmasters has something to offer everyone. As a result, we never need to beg for members. We only need to reach out and let them know what's in it for them. Attitude is everything. The job of VP membership in a Toastmasters club is to communicate with all those valuable people and also to keep the numbers up. Someone once asked me, Marina, why do we have to bother with the numbers? Can't we just give speeches and have fun? The answer, if we don't focus on membership, we will soon have no club. In my experience, the average loss over a six month period is four to six members, which means we really need to gain about a member a month just to stay even. Now, I don't have enough fingers to tell you how many members we would have left after one year if we start with 20 and lose five every six months, but I'll take a wild guess. 10. And of those 10, how many do you think might be active? Six? Seven? That means we may only have six members showing up regularly for our meetings. I don't need to tell any of you, I'm sure, the problems inherent in low membership. We've all been there. Everybody, please unmute now. We'll have our first discussion. And Carolyn, I'll ask you after five minutes just to say, time's up, please. Thank you. Okay. All right, and, and everybody, I can't see all of you. Please just speak or type something into chat and Reese Eskridge will help me with monitoring chat. So go ahead. Okay. Problems inherent in low membership. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. Being able to fill enough roles at the meeting to have a full meeting. Right. Absolutely. What about especially speaker roles? roles? Yes, Ben. Were you speaking? I said especially speaker roles. Speaker roles. You've got it. How about officer roles? We may not have enough officers to run the club. Those masters may be at least three officer positions. Yeah, big problem, right? 
Do any of you rent a meeting space? Just say yes if you do. Yes. yes. Okay. In that case, what about collecting dues and having enough money to pay for your rental? Could be a problem, right? That's also attracting new uh, members. Yes, attracting new members and also making the meetings fun enough and stress-free so that those members are going to want to come back, right? I, I know many times in the past, well, a few times when we had low membership and having to take on three, four roles in a meeting and others having to do the same just to fill them all. Let's hear from someone else. Multitasking can be an excellent learning tool, but extremely overwhelming to anybody who is new to a uh, new organization. So I think the primary focus needs to be obviously the growth portion, but encouraging people to grow at a pace that they're comfortable with. Being thrown into four roles on your third Toastmasters meeting doesn't <laughs> encourage that in a sustainable way. Yeah, it doesn't work very well, does it? And it also means the officer team is stressed and they maybe don't have enough time to spend with everybody. Other ideas? You also don't get the diversity of opinion and thought. Yes, absolutely. You may not have a diversity of membership either for that matter. Correct. Yeah, I, that's I, a very important point. Yeah, what about yeah. the Toastmasters mission? So we strive for excellence, right? Is that hard to do with low membership? Yes. So this yeah. sounds naive, but is it possible to have fun and work those numbers at the same time? Yes, I, I think it is. But if you have very low membership, it takes a lot more effort. And yeah. it's sometimes hard to hide the stress level. The more experienced we get, though, the better we get at that. And hopefully we can handle it. There was someone else that was going to speak. I'm sorry, I may have interrupted you. If so, please go ahead. Maureen, it's Carolyn. Yes. I have... Um... I like people's thoughts on this. This is my own perception based on VP membership um, for the second time around now, which is fine because um, I'm looking for new ways of doing things. But my perception in my community has been Toastmasters is all about public thinking, uh, public speaking, sorry. And that's fine. And I had an aha moment toward the end of last year, and I just want to know what people think about it. Yes, we are about public speaking but we need to change the way that we talk about this because in my mind, public speaking is the vehicle of, in which we give the other things to the community, the confidence, the communication, leadership, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But we're not getting that point across. They stop at the public thinking, of public speaking like a stop sign. Yeah, it scares a lot of people, doesn't it? Yeah. It can be scary to people. So if I note that people are feeling a little hesitant about public speaking, I tell them that they can ease into it, take on a smaller role, get comfortable in front of an audience, and you take it one step at a time until you feel more confident. Hopefully but that I, works for them. I think they're looking for something else in addition to the, like another way of doing it. They get so hung up on the public speaking Part that it stops them, but and we, we now have pathways, which is wonderful. But we need to get all the other tools out, and so we can explain to them how they fit into the role uh, into the public speaking, right? Well, and, and again, the way that I usually get around that is to encourage them into the small roles, and then they gain confidence as they go and take on bigger roles that require a bit more time, maybe a bit more preparation. Carolyn, uh, how are we doing for time? Speaking time's of, up. Time's up, okay. So thank you everyone for those ideas. In 2014, my club, Exeter Speak Ups, was at low ebb. We had 13 members, of which only five were active. A guest attended a few meetings, and then finally, on a cold, dreary, dark night in November, she asked me, Marina, when are all your other members coming back? And it makes me laugh hysterically even now to, to think about the answer that I gave her. 
on a cold, dark, dreary night in November, I told her, oh, when they come back from vacation, that's when they'll be back. Well, despite that shameless fabrication, by spring of the following year, we had 22 members, most of them active, and the following year, we had 32 members. Extra chairs had to be set up at the back of the room, and we regularly had bidding wars for speech and meeting roles. Good problem to have, right? Before we get into the nitty gritty of member guest and prospect tracking and communications, let's discuss ideas for attracting new members, both now when we have the COVID-19 restrictions and most of us are doing online meetings, but also once we are able to meet in person again. We have only a few more days to increase those numbers, as you know. So everybody, please unmute again, and let's hear your ideas for membership growth. Carolyn, let's time that at eight minutes, please. Thank you. No problem. All right, please unmute and go ahead and either speak or put something into chat, in which case Reese will help me monitor that. One area where I would like to focus on a particular club is attracting a larger audience, uh, particularly younger, a uh, younger audience. We have an excellent group of people right now of varying ages. Many who have been part of Toastmasters for a while and are at the mentor stage and we need people that they can mentor. So one thing my husband and I have just recently joined, we've been part of the club for just slightly less than six months. We're in our thirties and we've been promoting it to uh, our friends who are in their thirties and in their late twenties because public speaking and the confidence that comes along with it to Carolyn, uh, Carolyn's point is a skill set that is not developed in school. Uh -huh. And it is crucial to their careers, particularly right now where they're building on their careers for their 40s and 50s. So I'm hoping that we can branch into that group of people a little more. Many of the Toastmasters clubs I've been a, uh, had a pleasure to be a part of do not have that age of membership. And if we can get them in to help grow the club upward and outward and take advantage of these mentors that we have with so much experience, we could really benefit. Really good point, Hillary. And I do think that the online format now is something we should, all, all clubs should try to keep because that's going to encourage that age group to join. Their issues are they have families, they have jobs in addition, they're very busy people. And it's often difficult for them to attend largely because of childcare. So the online component may give them a chance. I suggest too though, targeting people who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, people newly retired. These are people who have time, who can take on those officer roles and really run with them, make those their own. Other people, ideas. Another area of concentration could be uh, entrepreneurs because, um, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that don't have the skill sets that they need to build their businesses to the levels that they possibly can and confidence and leadership and um, systems and all that kind of stuff that Toastmasters does provide to us as entrepreneurs. And I have gained many skill sets because of Toastmasters to build my businesses that I, that I, uh, that I have. So, I think it's a really great idea to focus on, on that market as well. Absolutely, Karina, that's a really good point. And one place, uh, actually several places where you can focus on a whole bunch of people who are entrepreneurs or business people is chambers of commerce, rotary clubs, lions clubs, clubs that already need public speaking and leadership. They need their members to be well-versed. And now they also need them to be able to present online. So these are new skills that they need to master. Try offering a presentation. We did one for a local Rotary Club. There were about 20 people present. It's a great way to communicate with a large pool of people at one time, all of whom are kind of looking for what we have to offer. Other ideas? Following up on that, 
I'm a co-organizer of a Google developers group. It's not just for developers, but, and we bring speakers in. We sometimes encourage members to present something. So uh, right now it's just online and we're figuring that out. But those same people for career reasons, right? Like you just said, um, but also because we need speakers sometimes. So this would help them help fill our agenda basically. Yes, yes. <laughs> Very, very good idea. Others? I was a club coach at one point when I was in District 18. I had actually coached a recently chartered college, which implies inherently high turnover in a seasonal basis. So what we did was we gave members who wanted to become officers a free membership the first time they like oh. for that term, and also discounted membership at least for the duration of that year okay so not new members obviously but people who had been members for a while and were willing to be officers you gave actually no it was new for new members who would become officers oh. during a time when we were getting more officers on board for the club executive okay i just wonder if they're going to become officers right away when they don't really know anything yet about the club or sometime later that's the risk you take. It's a risk. You have to take risks. Yeah, I, I think it is a bit of a risk. They would certainly need a lot of training and a lot of help from somebody. Are That's, there other ideas? I just, I just think a big focus should be on the mentorship program because I know that I've been part of Toastmasters for like two years, just over two years now. And I don't really know much about our mentorship program. And I think that it's a big asset to attracting new people to come to Toastmasters because you learn so much about, you know, communication and growth and um, you can, you can use that program in so many different ways. So I think learning the mentorship program, learning how to implement it at, at, its best strength and and actually doing it and following through is really important and getting feedback okay thank you again karina wonderful suggestions carolyn how are we doing with time 620 okay are there other ideas from anyone i think karina. i would I I would follow up on Hillary's ideas about approaching the youth. You know, there's lots of opportunity within Toastmasters in order to develop the skill sets that you need for advancement in business. And some of the business schools now are saying that the biggest problems with their graduates is that they're socially inept. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to communicate and they don't know how to interact with other people. Toastmasters gives them that platform. That's an excellent point, Jim. We've had a number of college students in our clubs and a couple of them persevered. Others came for one or two meetings and then dropped out. They, they just seem to have too many time challenges, which I can certainly understand. I just wanted to, um, so I wanted to add to what Reese had mentioned earlier about having um, new members take on some type of leadership role. Um, I think that is a great suggestion. So for me and my um, group of like Toastmasters, I took on the VP of public relations role only two months into being a new member just because that spot had opened up. And because I am a younger member, it just was helpful that I had someone mentor me and help me in that position. But it also gave me an accountability to want to come and provide input because I think when it comes to the younger demographic with Toastmasters, a lot of this stuff does seem a little bit mundane and we can't see how it Time's up. Okay, really thank you, Carolyn. That was really a wonderful point. Thank you very much for bringing that up. Everyone, I have uploaded a PDF entitled Club Membership Building Strategies into the chat column. I didn't wanna give it to you in advance, but this is for you to download if you would like. And if you are on a phone, please put your name and email address into chat, send it to me only, to Marina Kirsch, and I will email it to you later. 
So there is a lot we can do to improve membership numbers, but regular deliberate use of the club and Toastmasters International websites and tools may still be the most effective and reliable approach. It may be unspectacular, but the steady effort will pay off in more sustainable ways. Remember that open houses, demo meetings, and other membership campaigns, they might help for a while, but they are labor and time intensive. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. And they will still fall short if there's no established method for collecting and updating contact info and communicating with all those valuable people, the members, guests, and prospects. So let's start with some features of free Toast Host websites. And if you don't use the free Toast Host site, if you perhaps have a different custom site for your club, hopefully some of the features and principles will still apply and you'll still gain ideas to make your method more effective. Hopefully, none of you will go to the kitchen and bake cookies instead. So if I'm suddenly not on the shared screen anymore, please let me know because stuff happens. I'm going to now share our Exeter Speak Ups website. Hopefully all of you can see that. Now on our webpage, you'll notice at the top in red, we have a notice that we are holding online meetings. This is really important so that people know that. We also have a, a screenshot down here of a, a Zoom meeting. And further down, we have a live meeting photograph as well. Now, there are two sections of links here on the left. The maroon one is for the public, for anyone. You don't need to log in. The gray one down here is for members only. And there are two different logins here for members and for the site administrator. Before I log in at all, though, I'd like to show you this link right here called Contact Us. This is what people see when they have gone to your Toastmasters website and they're looking for information. They're trying to contact your officers. There are fields for their name, email address, a message, also telephone, but that one is optional. If someone fills in their telephone number, the VP membership or whoever receives these emails, and I will show you where you can change those settings and indicate who will receive them. Whoever receives it should give them a call because that way they have a friend immediately and they are much more likely to show up at your meeting. All right, so I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go to the member login. And now all of these links down here in the gray area have become available to me. So meeting agendas are available. And this one is the one mainly I want to go to, but I also want to mention we have instituted online dues renewal via this link here. We did that via squareups.com. In my membership building strategies file, there's information for how you can access SquareUps and where to go to, to find info to get an online option for your club. This is making a big difference now when we have the virtual meetings only. The restrictions we have right now are putting a big damper on getting dues paid otherwise. So let's go now to club email addresses. This is actually the most important link down in the members only section pertinent to our discussion today because in here you have lists you have email addresses that correspond with lists that i'm going to show you in a bit how you can maintain you have an address for all members all officers individual club officers and further down the other ones of importance to this discussion are former members guests prospects, those three primarily. Now, when you click on one of these, let's say,
guests. You will have two different options how to send that email. You could click yes via website emailer, in which case you'll get a little web form and you type into it and off the email goes. The other option is yes via system client, system email client. That means your default email program that you use all the time, which is indicated as default on your computer. I almost always use via system email client. And the reason is that I want to have a record of transmission in the email application I use regularly so I can archive the, those communications. There is a downside though, and that is when you leave the office of VPM, if you are the, the VPM, there will be no record of those emails for your successor. So it's very important for you to decide which system is going to work the best for you and your club and to make sure that you communicate with the successor. Let's close this down and let's log in now as site website administrator. You will need your club number and the password, which is usually only shared via officers. Once you log in, I'm going to close that for a minute, you'll see that an additional link has been formed here, Launch Admin Console. And when you click on that, it will take you to the workhorse area of the website where officers can upload files, make changes to the website, changes to the email list, the contact form, enter dues info, and so on. So it's, it's a console that's important to most of the club officers. Now this initial pane that we are on is for the website settings. If you were to click on homepage, you would see that here, it shows our homepage and I could change the text in here, I could add a photograph, I could do all sorts of things. However, I'm gonna go just back to basic settings because there's something here everyone should know about. It's a simple way to verify the information that Toastmasters International has for your club. If you click on this link right here to verify the information for your club, it will show you what someone inquiring about your club is going to see when they use the find a club link up here, this yellow link. So all of the information for our club is correct. Make sure to check the time, the days, the, the place where you're meeting. Also, online attendance is allowed. That's stated here. I'm going to show you later where you can make sure that that is activated for your club. Let's go back to our console. And now in this top menu is where you access all the different parts of the, con the, co the console. Website settings, membership management, email and contact forms, custom web pages. We don't use a lot, but we did create a page for videos, a page for photos, and some other pages. File manager, your secretary can upload the minutes there meeting agenda settings, and dues management for the treasurer especially. But I'm gonna go here. This is gonna be the bulk of our conversation because it is where you will track your members, prospects, guests, former members, etc. These lists correspond to the club email addresses that I showed you that were down in that members only section and these lists need to be maintained manually. Usually that's done by the VP membership. Now, based on my own experience, by far the most important steady but sure technique to obtain new members and retain current ones is to faithfully build, maintain, and use these first four lists. As a fail safe though, I recommend keeping all contacts in your personal 
address book as well and passing it on to the next VPM if possible. In my personal address book, I keep notes about when and where I met the person, whether they attended and when. I also archive all correspondence with prospects, guests, and LAPS members in my email app for future reference. So I can look back, I can see what was last discussed and when it might be appropriate to contact them again. Now here are some strategies and best practices. If you are VPM or whoever is maintaining these lists and you have more than one email address, put yourself on the guest and the prospect lists under another email and another name. Now I'm currently on prospects. You see there is Kay Marina here. I'm Marina Kirsch, that's how I am on the member list. But here I am Kay Marina with a different email address that's active for me. And under guests, I'm here under MK with a third email address. This way, even if you're no longer maintaining these lists, you will also receive meeting reminders. And if they're not going out, you will know. So if you are a control freak and you want to make sure that your club remains successful, this is one way to help ensure that. To add new contacts to any of these lists, let's say prospects, enter them here behind new into the three fields, name, email, address, and phone. If you click, you'll have an active cursor and you can enter that. Then down here, click save after each entry and that info will go down to populate this list. Use the list to send meeting reminders and other communications. Your officer team can determine whether to divide this up. Maybe the VPE will send to members along with the agenda, encouraging them to sign up, and the VPM might send to guests and prospects. Customize those reminders. Don't make it a form reminder the same every time, especially to prospects and guests. Incorporate a hook some reason why they might want to attend. These days, an appeal to perfecting their online presentation skills, keeping their career skills sharp, whatever. Try to address a wide cross-section of people, and by all means, tell them that guests attend for free. And do not wait till the day of the meeting. I find that three to five days in advance is great. Every so often, maybe at least two, three times a year, send an email to former members, especially now where you're having online meetings because uh -huh. they may also need to polish their online meeting skills. Uh -oh. When sending virtual meeting reminders to non-members, ask them to get back to you if they plan to attend. That way you can send them the Zoom link in advance and you don't need to send it to the entire list, which isn't really recommended. The other thing is, do not delete anybody from these lists unless you receive a notice from the website. I wait two months, if it happens two months in a row, that an ad, I'm told an address is not active, then I will finally delete that person from the list. But otherwise, let people unsubscribe. Sometimes people are on these prospect lists for years and then they finally attend. If they want to unsubscribe, they will be removed automatically by the website. You don't need to do a thing. Otherwise, only move them manually from one list to another. We're into recycling. So someone interested in the club who has not attended yet would go into this prospect list. And if they attend, they would be moved here to the guest list. So let me show you how you move people from one list to another. Let's say Barbara Arcieri, a prospect, has attended one of our meetings. I want to move her to the guest list. I would go click on the box before her name, and you can select multiple people, by the way, more than one if you need to, and then move to guest list. Look at the other options here. Move to members list, so if she becomes a member, we then click the box before her name, move her from guest list to member list. You can move to guest list, move to former members list, move to friends and affiliates list, etc. 
These down here are actually less useful except for one other one, which I'm going to show you. If a prospect guest or former member joins, again, you click the box in front of their name and go up here, move to members list. Once they become a member, the next thing to do is to, all right, we'll have to go to the members list. You can select people, let's say that, um, Matt has just joined, then I would send him the new member welcome right here. Send new member welcome. That is what will give them access to your website. So they can sign up for roles, they can access the email lists and all of the areas of the members only portion of your website. And in order to send that, by the way, you need to finally click save in order to send it. If someone attends without having notified your club in advance, it could still happen even now. Let's say one of your members sends a link to a, a friend who's expressed an interest. They send them the Zoom link. Make sure to get their contact info. And if you're meeting live, make sure all members really should be responsible for getting that contact info and passing it on to the VPM. People added to these lists on the prospect or the guest list or even the friends and affiliates list will get an opt-in email from the website. They will not automatically be on your list. And the way that you know if someone isn't on your list, I don't have anyone who hasn't opted in, but let's say Jackie Benson has a line through her name and through her email address, a black line, that means she's not opted in guess what? She's not receiving any of my emails. So two things you should do in addition to the automatic opt-in email that's sent by the website, make sure to also send a personalized email yourself to that person telling them to opt in because that email could very well go to their junk folder. You can set notification settings for opt-in emails impending deletions, and so on in the settings tab right here. So we currently have our website administrator, our president, and VP membership indicated for all three of these types of emails. And so we're all in the loop and we know when it's, it's time that someone maybe is going to be deleted. And if someone is about to be deleted, Again, like I said, make sure to email them again. And in the meantime, when you're sending them meeting reminders, you will have to add them manually to your email. What I do is I keep a running list of everybody expressing an interest in the club who is not on either one of these three lists, guests, prospects, members, if they haven't opted in yet as a prospect or a guest, add them manually, preferably in blind carbon copy, so their email address and name isn't out there for everybody to see. You can export your contact list, the entire list if you like, or one list at a time, by clicking up here, all. It will select all of the, all of the names and email addresses on that list, and then if you go to export contact info. You can select to export all, which will include all of your lists, members, prospects, guests, former members, etc., or just the selected list, which in this case was only our member list. I'm going to cancel that, but that's a very useful thing to do once or twice a year, so you never need to worry about losing your lists. If a member leaves a club or defaults on dues, you need to eventually move them to the former members list. You can wait a few months to do that so that they continue receiving meeting reminders, but do not be deceived. You do not have as many members as are showing on this list. I have a few members who have not yet paid. I've left them on. I'm hoping they'll come back. 
After each change you make on the console and before you close a tab window, make sure to click save. And then I'm not actually gonna save anything because I didn't do anything I wanna save. And then when you click close, it will only close that pane, not the entire console. However, I'm going to close that now too. Oh, actually, I take that back. I want to show you email and contact forms. The contact us form, if you click on that tab, it will show you who will receive the emails from new prospects via your website. We have president, VPM, and VPE indicated. Right now, I'm both VPM and VPE, but for the, the next year, we have a different VPE. Make sure you ask the people involved if they are willing to be on this list and make sure one member will accept prospect phone calls. In this case, it's me. And I make sure to call anybody who contacts our club and gives their phone number. So now I will close this. So when, when someone sends you that form, it will go to all three of the people that you've indicated to receive the email. And when any one of you, two or three people, officers usually, replies to that prospect, all three of you will get the reply as well. So you'll all know that the person has either already been contacted or has not. And if that person has not yet opted in, make sure to add them manually to the emails that you send out for meeting reminders. Now, the single most important thing to ask anyone interested in your club is this. Would you like to be on our email list for meeting reminders? If their answer is yes, get their contact info and then add them to the prospect list. Send them a personal email saying you enjoyed meeting them, including all of your meeting information, web page, FB page, etc., and that guests can attend for free. Tell them to click the link in the opt in email so they'll continue receiving reminders then just continue sending those customized emails before your meetings, send the Zoom link a day in advance, and to make sure guests receive a warm welcome, notify your club president of prospective, prospective guests in advance of meetings. I'm now going to move on to the Toastmasters International website, and I'm going to go right to Leadership Central, Club Central. All officers should become familiar. Should become familiar with Club Central. So here we are. There are a lot of important things here. I'm only going to go to three of them, however, because we're running a little short on time. Club demographics. This, this shows your club's mailing address, officer terms, and club preferences. I don't know if we're, oh, we are going there. Great. Okay, you have to make sure that all of this is correct and that your current club president is listed down here with address. Also, here's that important little check circle. Online attendance accepted. Make sure to click yes. That way when people go to the find a club and they're asking for online meetings, your club will show up. The next thing is club and contact, club contact and meeting information. If this is incorrect, they won't know when your meetings are, the correct time, the place, etc. Make sure all of this on here is correct and even that the map here is correct and put somebody's phone number in here so that a new prospect has someone they can call for information. Finally, and this is gonna be very brief, your addendum of standard club options. I was shocked when I became president of my club in 2014. If you expand all, you will see everything that's on here. And it could be that a lot of this stuff is glaringly incorrect. However, even if it is, you can't change it without a club quorum vote. So make sure to print it out, highlight the things that are wrong, bring it before your club and take a vote on changing the things to correct them. 
Now, in the past hour, we've covered the problems inherent in low membership. You've hopefully identified additional methods for attracting valuable new people to your club. And you learned effective, steady but sure techniques for membership and contact maintenance. Keep the fun in your meetings and the discipline in your communication strategy in order to grow your club. Let's make this not only a memorable year in the neighborhood, but a banner year for our clubs and for District 45. Thank you, everyone. I am now going to open it up for questions. So please unmute yourselves. You can also type into chat if you like, and Reese Eskridge will then help us to monitor that. I just think this was very informative, Marina. Thank you very much. This certainly uh, allows me to get off on the right foot as new VP of membership for my club. So thank you very much. Great. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And I think all of you will find it, it seems like a little bit of drudge work, but these steady efforts really do pay off and they save you a lot of time, effort and, and frustration later on. So I'm actually going to stop this share now. And in a bit, let's see. Yeah, in a bit, I'm going to put on the file that shows you how to go to your, your officer breakout session. But other questions from anyone? Um, if so, well, just I go just, ahead. I wanted to comment that when you set up the scenarios at the, in the first part were helpful because we could listen and get a, a better depth of understanding. Thank you. Great, great. I'm, I'm always happy to know that what really has helped me is helping other people. Other folks. Oh, I see someone, Brian McCormick asks, which media have people been using to advertise their club? Facebook website. Well, we use Facebook and our website. I actually had someone tell me recently that they offered an article about their club to a local paper. She says they're all screaming for content right now. And guess what? They're doing an article and that person is also attending a club meeting. This is actually something I plan to do for our club. We have a little local paper that gets circulated around the neighborhood. Newsletters, corporate newsletters, um, chambers of commerce newsletters, if they'll allow you to post. If your club is a member, they definitely will allow you. But if not, they might still welcome having you give a presentation because I think they too are looking for online meeting content, something that their members can learn from. Questions, anyone else? If you had mentioned professional societies probably have their own journal, maybe you could get in that too. Absolutely, absolutely true. This would include also teachers groups. It would include, yes, and possibly even local libraries might like to have a Toastmasters presentation, believe it or not, for the community. As a club, we've recently had an opportunity to publish condensed speeches in our local newspaper. We just started this initiative this week, actually, so we're excited to see where that leads. But when, after a speaker has given a specific type of speech that we believe would translate well to print, it's 700 words, so that's challenging, uh -huh. but we're excited to see how that, uh, that helps grow our membership through print alone. Oh, that's a fabulous idea. Yeah, because right now, most of us are limited. We're not meeting very many new people in person, are we? Mm -hmm. Depending on our circumstances. Some of us are more restricted than others. Right. Other questions, ideas, discussion? <clears throat> Would you like me to share what's in the chat? I'm sorry, Reese. What was it you said? <laughs> Would you like me to share what's in the chat? Yes, please. I've been kind of glancing over there every so often. <laughs> well, the first thing was Brian McCormack indicated he was here, and. The next couple are from the first part of this session. 
Modell mentioned officers have to multitask, and Veronique built upon that by saying officers have to do more than one role, which yeah. can lead to burnout. Uh -huh. that's Absolutely. Yeah, it, it certainly can. It certainly can. And oh. in, in fact, um, someone mentioned about mentoring. Yeah, mentoring, if you mentor your members, friendships form, right? I have to tell you, friendships are so important, which is why I call prospects. Make a friend, encourage them to come, find out what their goals are, where they found out about you. They'll probably be much more eager to attend if they already know somebody and they know that you know they're coming. And then when you form friendships through mentoring, it gets even stronger. And yes, I agree, in-person is so much better. But if you can't get together enough people to mentor properly, then a buddy system might work where you have a person who, let's say, has been a member for three months, just forming a buddy system with someone who has newly joined so they can help them through the first 90 days. Also, send a file right away to people who, are, who have attended one meeting. I usually send the pathways flyer. It's minus one of the paths, but still it's short, sweet, and it has a link. And I send them a club contact sheet with our club officers listed on it. Then later you can send first 90 days, you can send additional files to help them along in their, in their learning process. Other discussion and questions? I'll continue with the chat just before we go into that. Okay. I wrote to you, amazing job. And David said, yes, thank you. So this session has certainly been worthwhile. Thank you. You know, it's been a complaint of mine in some past years that there wasn't enough emphasis on the website. I encourage everybody becoming an officer, go to your club website and go to the Toastmasters International, uh, what is it again, um, Leadership Central and then Club Central. Log in and check every link on there to see what it is, what it does. Don't change anything if you're not sure about it because you could, you could screw up the communications. But just go and see everything that's there. Before I even became club president, I did that and I was amazed at how much I learned about the functioning of a club, successful functioning, just by knowing what's on these websites. And the last thing in the chat is from Brian. His question is, which media have people been using to advertise their club? Yeah, we, we actually covered that, but does someone else have ideas? Reese, did, um, did you have an idea? I mean, some people use Meetup, maybe Instagram. That was something one of my past clubs did. But Facebook I, and the website, I think, are the two big ones. Mm -hmm. I also recommend a couple times a year as VPM, I will send kind of a form email to all of our club members telling them, hey guys, we have a club membership campaign going on as of now. Please personalize this email as you wish, but send it to three or four people that you think might benefit from Toastmasters. And now they don't even have to live close by. So that's an additional benefit. And I hope that our clubs can all continue the online option because we will open up membership possibilities to people who otherwise cannot attend at all. And it might not be that they live far away. It might be they have kids that they have to sit for in the evenings or in the daytime or any other time. Peter, did you have something to comment on? Just as part of what you just said, during the ice of the pandemic, when the rules are different than when they were back before March, uh, there's an advantage because you can invite people from Timbuktu right. to join your club. And I, I mentioned that two or three times a year, please contact your former members. We mm -hmm. have had four of our former members come back in recent weeks. Oh, I need to share the screen so that you know where to go. All right, this has your officer breakouts. So please type before your name. Marina, one thing that uh, my soccer club is doing, we recently had our year-end awards. So there was a template created by the BPE through International. 
and we're going to put the awards online on our uh, Facebook so people can yeah. see what it's all about. Yeah, we've been announcing whenever someone gets an award, including Jonathan Bohm, everybody. Our, our D45 director, he just gained his DTM. Yay. <laughs> oh, we're so excited. <laughs> yes, that's a big deal, Carolyn, to acknowledge achievement. Because if it doesn't get acknowledged and a person has worked so hard, it's a little bit maybe, I don't know, disempowering. Mm. We want to empower people. Oh, true. Oh, right. We thought by putting everything on at once in, in, in the variety of awards, that might interest new prospective people. Yes, absolutely agree. Thank you, Marina. It was wonderful. See you later. Thank you to all of you and, and blessings on all of you. I hope that your clubs thrive and I hope you have a great year. Take care. Sorry, this is a question about how I can um, exit full screen. Actually, I'm not, I'm not leaving the meeting yet. Some of you are still maybe needing the shared um, file. So if anybody has any other final comments, please. Why did you change your number?